So I ran out of time to explain a little bit more. I wanted to really emphasize this, 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 the fact that this, the maximum a posteriori estimate, took this particular form. Why I wrote it in this form rather than just, you know, keeping the original expression here. It looks a little more complicated, but this is really a, an important concept to understand. So I said this is a convex combination of these two points, and to drive home, you know, or to to explain what I mean by that, if you don't know what that term means, a convex combination combination of points x and y, you know, just some for any points, they could be, you know, some they could be vectors or point, or, you know, real values or whatever, is some number, some real number alpha times x plus one minus alpha times y or some real number alpha between 0 and 1. Could be 0 also or 1. So what this is doing, a convex combination, so if this is x and this is y, you know, they're just some, maybe in some, you know, some points in some vector space or something, then all the, the set of these convex combinations are the points which linearly interpolate between x and y. That's supposed to be a straight line. So it's all the points on the straight line from x to y. As alpha, so as alpha varies from zero, you know, if alpha is say, well, one, then you start out here at x, and as alpha decreases down to zero, you move over to y. So the nice thing about writing the map in this way is that you can think of the map as being sort of like the sample mean. So it's a special case of the sample mean. If, for example, let's see, so if n, uh, let's see, if, um, well, so okay, so let's say it this way. So if, yeah, I guess it's not strictly speaking a special case in this case because, well, if, if sigma squared were zero, then this would be zero. And this would be n over n, which is 1, and you would get the sample mean. But, you know, technically speaking, we should have a positive, strictly positive variance. But you can think about sort of in the limit as, as the variance goes to 0, that the, the sample mean, the M, which is, by the way, which was the MLE, right? Remember, if you remember that the, this was the MLE, should, I should emphasize that, this was the MLE, and... Uh, you can think about this as uh, the MLE is sort of a special case of the map. And furthermore, using this convex combination interpretation, as n and sigma squared sort of vary, then you're getting a range of values between the sample mean and the prior mean. Right? So if our prior mean was here, say, and we got a sample mean over here, then as n and sigma squared vary, then our posterior, or rather, our, our map estimate is going to be somewhere in this range. And so, like, let's see, so if as n goes to, what do we want n to do? If we wanted to recover mu, then if n was, right, so if n was 0, if we have no data, right, that makes sense. If we have no data, then this is 0, so this drops out, and this just becomes 1 times mu. So if we have no data, so when n is 0, we start out at mu, and as n goes to infinity, if n is very, very large, then this become this goes to zero, and this goes to one. So as n goes to infinity, we're approaching the sample mean, which is the MLE. So it, it's very it, this, and it, this you know this type of representation as a convex combination of the prior and the sample mean. It turns out that this is actually a fairly general. Uh, this is a fairly general thing for the map estimate.
very often that it, it turns out to be a convex combination of the prior and the and well more generally the the MLE. And this is where a connection with well this is where you can really see a connection with the um, some 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 very closely related concepts called regularization and shrinkage. So shrinkage looks shrinkage looks a lot like this. It's just, I mean it's essentially the same thing, and and so does regularization. So I just wanted to emphasize this very important interpretation of uh, sort of understanding how you know what the map is doing in relation to the prior and the MLE.